Hello and welcome to the machine learning technique class. So myself, Anand Rajan, I'll be handling this course for your semester. So the subject code for this course is CS8082. So before going into the subject, we should first ask and we should try, try to interrogate ourselves as to why we have to learn this subject. What is the purpose of learning the subject? So machine learning is basically uh, trying to make systems intelligent. So we have a system. It could be any system that we talk about. The system is usually hard code defined. So if you if you have a system, it is usual if you want it to work on a traditional computing platform. So it is it is hard coded, it is algorithm driven. Whereas now this machine learning, it is going to convert these algorithm driven systems into data driven systems. This is the main purpose of learning this subject. So we are going to take data, which is as a, as we see in many places, data is a new oil. So uh, it, it, it is so important nowadays to because we have abundant data available on the internet and abundant data that is acquired due to sensors and other available input devices. Uh, for example, we have Amazon Alexa, we have Google Home. So what do they do? They are taking some speed signal and converting that into some action. So here we have to understand how these devices are getting intelligent in solving different real world problems. So that is the main reason we are going to learn this subject called machine learning. So this is an elective for your seventh semester. So we will just jump into the syllabus now. So your syllabus basically deals with yeah, your syllabus basically deals with. Uh, in the first unit, you have learning problems, perspectives and issues, concept learning and similar topics. Uh, similarly, in the second unit, you have neural networks and genetic algorithms, which are evolutionary algorithms giving you uh, the idea of uh, evolving into better hypothesis. And then in the third unit, you have Bayesian and concept-based learning. And uh, we try to understand classifiers better here. And similarly, you have instant based learning in the fourth unit where we are looking at cane and learning. And finally, we look at the advanced learning in the fifth unit. So most of your slides and other materials are from Dr. Tom Mission. And uh, you can find all these slides and other materials in his own uh, you know his own website and just go into his website and you can uh, find his profile so this is profile and you can get all the details that you require regarding machine learning that is your basic textbook here so coming back uh, we look at how machine learning is defined in the perspective of uh, the, the 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 solving real world problems. We look at how we are going to uh, define a problem here. Okay, so before that, let me give you some examples like uh, in Kegel, because Kegel is uh, a repository with all kinds of data set and uh, uh, you know real world problems that are available already. All these data sets help you in defining a problem. Okay, so as you can see, credit card, uh, credit card fraud detection, uh, or you have a movies data set from which you can find what is the name of the movie, uh, what is the rating of the movie. Similarly, you have huge stock market data set where you can try to find what will be the predict, what will be the stock value tomorrow or in the future. Similarly, you can look at a lot of other data sets like Puma, Indian Diabetes data set, where a patient's various 
uh, attributes with respect to the data sets have given and we are trying to find if the patient has got a uh, diabetes or not the students performance in exam this is a simple data set where you can uh, look at uh, you know um, what is the uh, marks secured by the student in various subjects and from that we can try to find what will be performance in the future and uh, predicting wine reviews are the iris species uh, predicting what is the name of the flower you know predicting uh, the breast cancer so there are a lot of other data sets like this n number of data sets that are available so you can find all of them on google so this is one data set where you can find whether people are happy in the country or not so it is going to give you a lot of uh, data with respect to uh, you know the the happiness uh, related uh, attributes like the emotions uh, the religious and belief system social science economics a lot of other uh, data are taken and we are trying to find what is the probability that people are more ha happier will be more happy in the future so coming to the slide we'll try to understand why machine learning so recent progress in algorithms and theory uh, has helped in understanding the the computation in a more better manner whereas are we all happy with what algorithms are doing so that's one question we should ask are we all happy that the algorithms which are uh, hard coded already with someone's imagination is it unbiased so these are all different questions that we try to ask similarly the availability of uh, n uh, the petabytes of data that are available from different sensors or you know even google search data is uh, is is so vast that we that we that we are not able to find uh, more resource descriptive data so similarly we have computational power uh, which is only increasing year by year which is a biggest advantage for machine learning and we all know that the applications are uh, varied in different verticals of uh, the industries which makes machine learning a better choice for the uh, academics so that we can create more uh, better engineers who can solve a lot of real world problems using machine learning so main three important areas where uh, it is more applicable is data mining so because we have a lot of data so we have a lot of medical records each one has got medical record so from that how do we predict what is the uh, you know disease that can attack or what is the uh, available uh, medicine is it sufficient or not so those things can be analyzed similarly we can uh, try to understand uh, speech recognition we can try to understand auto autonomous driving so these are different applications that help in uh, that, that actually machine learning guides through okay so a news reader that learns user interests so we can try to uh, bring in a news reader you can uh, which can easily find what news you are interested in and read it out to you so for example in terms of data mining we have uh, you know the, this simple data set where we are trying to analyze uh, if a, a pregnant patient is going to have uh, you know a normal delivery or an emergency cesarean so this depends on lot of factors a lot of instances that are given there so these are all different instances that we can see so these are instances uh, and these are whether it is yes or no uh, as a binary answer is generally called as attributes so these are called attributes so from these we can try to understand if the patient if a new patient who is coming with the same set of uh, you know attributes is going to have uh, cesarean or not so for example we have 9714 patient records so this this is a number of records that we have and each describing a pregnancy and birth so each patient 
record contains 215 features. So these are all different features as I told you. This, this can be called either features or instances. Okay. So both are same. In some places they say features, some places they say instances. They're anonymous. Okay. So we are trying to predict if, if the, there is a high risk of emergency cesarean uh, with respect to the available data set. So as you can see, these are all these two data set in different time instances did not have that kind of uh, you know risk. But here, as you can see, once the data changes and ultrasound data, we don't have. So once it changes and a lot of other uh, attributes are missing. So if that is not there, so probably it is possible that the emergency C-section is there. Or sometimes this data can be an error. So we have to think in various dimensions as to how machine learning is applied here. Okay. So one simple rule could be if there is no previous vaginal delivery and abnormal second trimester ultrasound and mal presentation at admission, then probability of emergency C-section is 60%. So this is one way of understanding uh, what is the probability that that particular patient, a new patient is uh, who is having these problems can lead to 60% uh, possibility that that person can have a cesarean. So from that particular data itself, we can understand that if 60% is the probability, then probably 40% is uh, there is no chance of cesarean and there is an orbital. So there itself we can understand the probability better. Okay. So similarly, you have another data set where we are trying to uh, find if the if a, if a customer is going to be profitable uh, depends on what is the year of credit, what is the loan balance, what is the income, what is if the person is going to have is having a own house or not, uh, what other deli delinquent accounts and maximum billing cycles, late cycle. So how many times the, pay, the customer has paid lately? So these are different data that are taken and we are trying to find if the customer is profitable or not. I mean, the, the bank can give a credit card application or not. So as you can see, if other delinquent accounts is greater than two and the number delinquent bill cycles is greater than one, then the debit card, the credit card application is denied. It is not given because maybe he's paying late. The customer is paying late and is not properly uh, taking care of the account. Then probably there is a problem. Similarly, there can be another condition where delinquent account is zero uh, and income is greater than $30,000 and the credit, years of credit is greater than three. Then the customer is profitable for the bank. So the credit card application is accepted. So like this, because each bank will have a lot of customers trying to uh, applying for credit cards. Similarly, uh, another data set like customer purchase behavior. Uh, as you can see, with, the, with these features like sex, age, income, own house, is yes, there or not, MS products, and what is the computer they have, will they purchase uh, Excel software or not? So that is uh, uh, a customer purchase behavior with respect to Microsoft uh, because Microsoft has got these uh, products. So they are trying to find if the customer will buy in the future uh, Excel or not. Similarly, we have customer retention, depending on what is the different data features that are there. Similarly, we have another data set like process optimization, with, it, with all these features like what is the stage, what is the fan speed, what is the viscosity, what is the fat content, what is the density, what is the spectral peak, and then try to find whether the uh, product which is manufactured in the process is either underweight or overweight. Okay, so like this. We have so many problems that can be solved with, with respect to the prediction. Okay. So this one important, uh, you know, invention with respect to machine learning is, you know, uh, the, the autonomous driving. So it is very difficult to understand autonomous driving because there are a lot of uh, features that are required to uh, drive the car on its own without any driver. Okay, so which is very difficult and we should understand what are the different 
analogies that are required to uh, make autonomous driving possible. So basically, we should understand uh, there are four mathematical uh, domains that are required for machine learning, which are linear algebra, uh, statistics, probability, and uh, partial differential equations, which are the backbones of machine learning. Uh, uh, you know the subject so the prerequisite is these domains so please go through them uh, when you have time so that we can solve little small exercises and assignments easily so where is this all heading so we should understand that today uh, the machine learning whatever applications we are doing is only the tip of the iceberg we have a lot of things to be done okay so the, the the first generation algorithms which are there are getting more matured and they are getting into a data driven uh, based decision making uh, due to machine learning okay so we have a lot of databases that are being created as i showed you kegel has got a lot of data sets okay so these are all different data sets that are available and from this they are trying to predict so as you can see suppose this graduate admission they open this uh, you can see that the what is the probability that a particular person is getting admitted uh, with uh, these uh, you know into university with these available uh, features so feature one is serial number feature two is GRE score TOEFL score what is the university rating okay what is the SOP what is the LOR letter of recommendation that is does he have or not what is the CGPA what is the research uh, caliber of the particular student what is the chance of admission so this is the chance of admission the probability that the particular uh, student will be getting admitted so 92 minutes is he'll probably get admitted if it is less than 50 is probably not get admitted so this is how uh, these are all different features that we are trying to understand to uh, you know predict whether a particular thing will happen or not so this is all necessary because there are a lot of students that are coming and the machines can easily use them to find if that particular uh, student will get admitted for the next uh, academic session or not okay so there are a lot of opportunities that we have uh, before us so uh, so learning across full mixed media data so we have a lot of data as, as i showed you so many data are there with all sorts of sensors with all sorts of uh, uh, you know uh, feedbacks that are taken uh, so it is very important that we apply uh, these data and try to uh, create uh, new resource descriptive, uh, you know, decisions, active by experimentations. Uh, uh, it's better we make better decisions than, you know, predictions. So predictions may go wrong, but decisions we have to take in, term, in terms of the, uh, the the importance of, at that particular situation, decisions are more important. Because there are a lot of critical applications, like I said, autonomous driving are, you know, uh, hospitals which use machine learning are, uh, you know, virtual uh, reality based operations which are very crucial in terms of how machines try to predict that particular situation and apply the uh, corrective measures there are a lot of relative disciplines like artificial intelligence uh, bayesian methods control theory information theory philosophy these are all different areas due to which machine learning has evolved so machine learning is not on its own it is one paradigm of all these technologies so these are all different technologies trying to govern or trying to, uh, you know, improve the dynamics of machine learning. Uh, the rest will continue in the next session. Thank you.